If you haven't heard the news, some employers are planning to blacklist all students from Conestoga College from here on. And to that, I say, what the fuck? Like, you know what? Why stop at just blacklisting Conestoga College students? Why not all college students? Actually, why not blacklist all university students? You, you see what I'm doing? Like, this post that's gaining traction on Reddit, and I hope they're not being serious, because if you're generalizing a whole college, let alone a department, okay? A whole college because they have an overabundance, an oversupply of one set of international students. Like, you're a shitty employer. And in fact, if I was looking for a job and I saw that it said no concert with college students uh, accepted, they're probably a place you probably wouldn't want to apply for. Like, I would run. That's a red flag. How about some of these employers update their hiring processes? Ever think about that? Ever think about filtering? I don't know, just a guess. Because someone who has hired from colleges across the country, from universities east to west, I can tell you, not all programs are equal. Some of the programs you think might be on the top are actually on the bottom. You have to look at every student individually because a good student is a good student no matter what school they went to. Sure, there's credentialism. Sure, maybe some of the students who went to Harvard or went to U of T, whatever it is, maybe there might be a cut above, but also no guarantee. I've had some fantastic international students and domestic students from colleges that you think, ah, uh, where to make the cut? Well, good thing I'm not just looking at colleges. I'm looking at overall abilities, personality, character, resume, all that. And a college or a university is just one line on a resume. So just a heads up for any student out there. My name is Asitonka Agri Abba and channel is called Asi Darling because I'm such a damn. <laughs> And welcome back to my YouTube channel, Chaga Asi Darling. Thank you guys so much for clicking once again. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. And to all my OGs, you know what to do. Comment down below. Let me know, gang, gang. Now, I am going to be doing a voiceover. That's because your girl is very tired. Very, very tired. I couldn't see to shoot a video. But first, um, we got good news today concerning the master's program and um, their new updates. But let's discuss the first clip I posted. I found something on TikTok. It's a clip about employers looking to blacklist Conestoga College. Understand? that this news is allegedly and it has been going around not just conestoga some people are talking about lampton and some other colleges that um employers have noticed that probably may have some shitty programs and some you know just um how would they call it they call them diploma meals just programs that people just put in and maybe that would have stemmed from the fact that i, I recently posted a clip where people were talking about the amount of money conestoga made in um that short time introducing different programs and all of that we are still looking at that so i know a lot of my um subscribers have talked about having um admissions into these colleges so this is just something of an information we do not know yet so guys let me know your thoughts in the comment section if you've heard anything like that uh, let's talk about the master's program so this morning earlier um Olu of canada had posted this i'm going to be reading from his page the breaking news is that starting february 15 2024 master's degree programs in canada will now be eligible for a three-year postgraduate work permit and meaning students graduating from a master's program that is less than two years who, and who meets all PGWP requirements will get three years work permits. Understand that most programs in Canada already are like 18 months to um, two years, most master's programs. So they always get three years. But then for those that are way less and you meet, this is just going to be like something that is a given. So the post um, goes on to read, uh, so update from IRCC, postgraduate work permit PGWP update for graduates um, of master's degree programs. In recognition to the graduates of master's degree granting programs are excellent um, candidates to succeed in Canada's labor market and potentially transition to permanent residence. We have made a change to the length of the PGWP so that they can have an opportunity to meet the required Canadian work experience in order to apply for their per, um, permanent residence. Starting on February 15th, 2024, a longer 
three-year um, postgraduate work permit to be available to those who are graduating for a master's degree program that is less than two years and who meet all PGWP eligibility criteria. The length of the PGWP is for programs other than master's degrees will continue to align with the length of the study um, program. That's for other programs. You understand, like if you're doing a, um, a postgraduate diploma, they are saying that this news is not just for you. It's not affecting you. So just understand that it's going to also align with your study to the maximum of three years. So if you're doing postgraduate work, um, if you're doing your normal diploma programs and it's just two years, understand that you will still get your three years. If you're doing for one year, you're getting your one year. So this is not going to reduce those for diploma. It's just going to improve those for master's. Okay, so this next one says, who is eligible for a longer postgraduate work permit? This is graduates of programs that are at least two years in length at PGWP eligible DLIs are eligible. Of course, normally it's usually for um, those for two years or three years that you're eligible for three years work permit. And as graduates of a master's degree, for the master's, what they improved on is even though it's less than two years, you're still getting your three years work permit. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Reading from the comments, somebody said, or more, international married students should just concentrate on getting admission for master's because it's, uh, it's a way for better money spent. Exactly. All my other videos have said, if you're married and you're, and, and, um, and you're a prospective international student, then please just look for master's admission. It doesn't make sense to do um, diploma and say, oh, if I get PR, I'll not add my husband. All those things are longer routes. Just go for master's. Okay, so because the person went on to say, it's a way better money spent, three years PGWP. You're also eligible to sponsor your husband. Of course, eligibility for SOWP. You have higher CRS score because if you do master's, your CRS is higher than those that do just college. And then some provinces like Ontario, of course, there's a route for masters. Whether or not you have a job, there's a graduate scheme for those to just get direct um, 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 PMP, which gives you 600 points. But now the issue, which is something that this person um, got perfectly, he says the issue is getting admission now, especially for people with 2-2 um, as well. This is the main issue because some most universities, 2-2 admission is going to be difficult. And I also indicated that some certain top colleges are going to be making 2-2 admission also difficult. So um, let's just pray and hope um, what's, whatever it is that this news is positive for most of us. Okay, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I have another news that I got, um, and that is some schools are going on strike. That's in Quebec concerning tuition fees hike. And these are not just um, colleges. These are universities going on strike. A lot has been happening in terms of the economy of the country. Of course, the economy everywhere worldwide has been affected. Many a times, students get the first hit because if they are dependent on monies coming from their different countries, the moment they do conversion, it becomes little or nothing rent has gone up there's so much competition on every other thing grocery bills are up many people are stranded um, people are looking for jobs there are limited jobs this um, period of course winter is around and a lot of things have been happening so yes it trickles down into unrest and sometimes there are protests and um, of course um, riots and um, um, these different things happening in schools not like um, out of the um, how would I put it not like the exaggerated form where they begin to take to streets yet but um, students are protesting of course hike and understand that this protest is not just international students in fact it's not even international students these are domestic students that are seeing that even the, the amounts that they pay which is way way less than what international students pay they are complaining that it's too much a lot of them are complaining because quebec um, was known to have the lowest um tuition fee rate so most people run to keep uh, quebec for better tuition fees and right now quebec has um for some certain universities they have increased their tuition um more than 50 percent more than what they used to collect before so that has affected a lot of students I'm going to be posting like a news outlet when they talked about it. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and we're going to discuss further. Strikes with China's absolute tuition hikes. I think they're horrible. I think uh, it's just uh, basically measures of austerity 
covered as language rights. Over 9,000 Concordia and McGill students are ditching class this week after voting for a strike against Quebec's tuition fee increases for out-of-province and international students. Which means that they will be picketing and non-attendance of all classes that are affected by the strike for Wednesday, January 31st to Friday, uh, February 2nd. Concordia Student Union calls it historical, as various departments in the entire Faculty of Fine Arts are part of the demonstration. Hannah Jackson of the Concordia Student Union says they have three demands they're making to the CAQ government. The first is to completely rescind any tuition increases of either out-of-province or international student tuition for September 2024. It, we are also demanding that they retract the current franchisation regulations that they are opposing on universities and to create a working group to create realistic and attainable franchisation goals. We are also asking that the government reconsider their current stance which is allowing students from France and Belgium to receive out-of-province tuition instead of international tuition and instead consider all of the other francophone countries including countries in West Africa and the Caribbean that are French speaking but are currently not given the same benefits as students from France. The provincial government announced tuition fees for out-of-province students will nearly double starting this fall from $9,000 to a minimum of $12,000 per year. International students will see a base rate of $20,000. Also in the 2025-2026 school year, students graduating from English language universities will have to pass a French proficiency test and speak at a conversation level by graduation. Montreal is is an economic bastion, but it's also a student uh, a student bastion, a bastion of universities. And I think uh, I think if if we go through with this uh, tuition hike, this will impact not only people in Montreal but outside of Montreal too. Tomorrow I will be at the protest here. I will not be attending any of my classes. Jordan Carr, who's an out-of-province Concordia University student, says he would not have come to Montreal to study if these tuition hikes were in place. That's going to deter a lot of students away from Montreal, and Montreal is an amazing student city, and it's going to deter a lot of students and make them go to other major cities like Vancouver and Toronto, even though it might be more expensive for real estate and rent there, their university fees are still significantly cheaper with the tuition increase here. In Montreal, Suidarasi, City News. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Now, one thing is prevalent, and it is that most international students from all the provinces in Canada are going through one thing or the other. For this one in Quebec, of course, the rising fees, and you can see that the students are claiming, of course, that the government is having some form of prejudice against those that are from other African um, French-speaking countries. We have French-speaking countries in Africa. They are treating them as international students, while maybe those from um, Belgium and France are being treated like domestic students. So, it is it is causing a lot of issues there in Quebec now breaking news because one thing that doesn't end living here in Canada is the amount of breaking news now I'm going to sound this for mainly the students a lot of students are here confused it's not a situation whereby you spend so much money and then you do not have a route to PR that's if that is what you want okay Many people have spent a lot of money and then you are having situations whereby they are cutting, cutting the number of students coming in. They are doing a lot of things to restrict um, the international students. So those that are here have to find ways to be in the pool. It doesn't make sense for you to be schooling and listening to this video and you haven't done your IELTS or your West. It does not make sense. There is no excuse whatsoever. Go and do those two and be in the pool because guess what? For those of you that studied in Ontario, yesterday they went into the pool and guess the cutoff. 379 to 430. 379 is so low. It is so low. If you're below 30 or you're early 30, very early 30s, you have a BSc and you have certain things. You did well in your IELTS. There's no way you're not getting more than 379. They went in to select those people to give the PMP nomination. Ontario, not a different province. Ontario that doesn't give PMP went in to select. And the knock codes that they selected mainly, of course, health-related knock code and all of that. I'm going to be posting it here. Guys, I do not want you to waste time. For those of you that have been expecting and waiting, please be in the pool. 
anything can happen. We are suspecting category based draws are going to be coming up. So be in the pool so that you can take advantage of it. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, for this few days, your girl has been resting. I've had a lot of time off work. My work has just mainly been in the evenings, but I've just been sleeping. I needed the rest. Uh, God is on our side and everything is going well. I wish you guys all the best for those that have been confused. Um, those that listen to the, the news in front. Everything we are hearing now is allegedly. Um, Conestoga students, please do not be scared. Everything we hear is allegedly. Those students that are hearing different things. The main thing is, I'm not going to lie. If I hear it, I'm going to bring it here. Just so that if you have a plan B, you can start looking towards it, okay? Alright guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As usual, I'm your girl, Asi Darlene. Please check out my other videos. I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys! Why you see me dance so?